All right, um, this is the second video on Taylor series of uh, complex functions. Um, in this uh, video, we're going to be looking at some examples of how to uh, calculate the Taylor series. Uh, if you are watching this video and you haven't seen the part one, we strongly recommend that you um, watch the part one first. So here we're going to find uh, the Taylor series uh, of a function about the given point. Um, we are going to be mostly interested in generating the general expression of the Taylor series in summation notation. Uh, but if uh, that fails, uh, then a four term expansion uh, is going to be the next uh, option. Um, then we're going to find the region of convergence of the Taylor series. So in example number A, we've got uh, E to the power of i z. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to differentiate this a few times and see whether we can generate uh, a formula for a general formula for the nth order derivative because uh, this is the route towards uh, generating a general formula uh, for the uh, for the Taylor series. So second order derivative is going to be uh, i over 2 squared e to the i z on 2. Um, second third order derivative going to i over 2 cubed e to the i z on 2. Uh, if we keep this going, um, then the nth order derivative is going to be i over 2. Uh, to the power n i z over 2. So if you plug in z naught here, uh, z naught is pi, it's going to be i over 2 to the power n e to the i pi on 2. e to the i pi on 2 is just i, so it's going to be i over 2 to the power n times i. And then now we can find the general uh, formula for our Taylor series. Uh, to the power n over n factorial. All right. So this we're going to plug in here. Um, so this is going to be summation of i over 2 to the power n times i all divided by n factorial uh, z minus pi to the power n from 0 to infinity um, if we like we can write this as i to the power n plus 1 uh, z minus pi to the power n all divided by 2 to the power n times n factorial. So that's going to be the general uh, formula for the Taylor series of this. Of course, to find the first term, simply plug in n is 0 here, uh, then second term n is 1, etc. All right, then for part B, we have got uh, inverse tangent of Z. So for part B, got uh, inverse tangent of Z. So F of Z is inverse tangent of Z. Uh, this is about the origin. Oh, um, before we finish uh, with uh, part one, uh, we need to find the radius of convergence. There are two ways we can find, we're going to find the radius of convergence. Uh, so this was just part one. Um, this was just part one. Part two, we need to find the radius of convergence. Um, so... Um, the, uh, the the quick route is uh, 
to make a plot and the plot we not we need to plot z naught z naught is pi so there then we need to find the point closest to pi where this function fails to be analytic now um the this is an exponential of a polynomial okay so polynomials are analytic everywhere and exponentials are analytic everywhere so here i've got a composite of two analytic functions and so that is also going to be an analytic function so we won't be able to find a number where the function is singular here and so that implies that uh, the uh, this is going to be convergent in the region um, or everywhere so long as z minus pi is less than infinity um, the other route is to is to work out the value of l to so work out the value of l as defined in the method of um, the ratio test of convergence um, so remember here if l is uh, less than one then the sequence or the series is convergent everywhere so here w uh, n plus one is going to be i to the power n plus two z minus pi to the power n plus one uh, all divided by 2 to the power n plus 1 n plus 1 factorial and then this multiplied by the reciprocal of w which is 2 to the power n n factorial um, i to the power n plus 1 here z minus pi to the power n then the um, i's are going to work out to uh, just i in the numerator here and z minus pi in the numerator here the twos will be a two here and then the factorial terms is going to give us n plus one here and then as n goes to infinity this goes to zero so that means the um the sequence is always or this uh, series is always going to be convergent Right, now going on to part B, we have got uh, f of z uh, is the inverse tangent of z, the center about which we're doing the expansion is zero. Okay, uh, so here, uh, if we find the derivative of this, going to be 1 plus z squared. Um, if we try to do the derivatives repeatedly uh, very soon you're going to notice that um, uh, deriving a general formula is going to be very it's going to be very very difficult at most um, so we are not going to go that route um what we will do is uh, we, we we notice that uh, this expression for f prime um can be put in the form of the uh geometric uh, series because in the geometric series we've got one minus w equals to the summation w to the power n in the region of convergence here is this one so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to um, work with that one so f prime uh, is 1 over 1 plus z squared this we can write as 1 over 1 minus negative z squared which is now in this form where w is negative z squared uh, this is negative z 
squared like this. So that means we can write this in summation notation. It's going to be negative z squared to the power n. n goes from 0 to infinity. This should be fine so long as uh, negative z squared negative z squared is less than 1. Um, now, this we can write as negative 1 to the power n, z to the power 2n. Um, so this is the series for f prime. However, looking for f, so to find f, we're simply going to have to integrate this with respect to z. So that's exactly what we're going to do. 2n dz. Uh, when we integrate that, that is going to give us z to the power 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1. Um, then there's going to be a constant. Um, now, remember, our f is the inverse tangent. Now, to find the constant, we are going to use the fact that we know the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. So we're going to plug in 0 on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So if we do that here, this thing is going to be 0. But the summation term is going to be 0 as well. Um, so this is telling us that k is 0. Um, if k is 0, then we have got the... Um, We've got the expansion for our uh, inverse tangent. Okay. Uh, notice here when we do this integration, uh, we just need to be careful whenever we start dividing by stuff. We need to be careful that uh, 2n plus 1 cannot be 0. But I uh, can see that 2n plus 1 equals to 0 gives us n equals to half. And since uh, the values of that n takes here are positive and they're always integers, then this one does not arise. So we don't have uh, that problem. Okay, so now for the region of convergence, uh, we can either derive this from here. In fact, uh, that's going to be the first method we're going to do. So for the region of convergence, um, that's just going to be negative z squared less than 1. Uh, this is simply going to be magnitude of negative is 1. It's going to be magnitude of uh, z squared, which is z. Uh, uh, magnitude of z squared um, is less than 1. So this is just going to be magnitude of z is less than 1 which is simply a unit a disk centered at the origin. Okay, so that's going to be i, and that's going to be 1 here. So, so long as z is inside here, then uh, this Taylor series is going to be convergent. Um, that's method 1. The second method of doing this, uh, of course, is using the ratio test. So in the ratio test, we're going to do limit as n goes to infinity of wn plus 1, going to be negative 1 to the power n plus 1, z to the power 2n plus 3, all over 2n plus 3. So just uh, here, what we're doing is for every n here, we we'll replace it by n plus 1. Then we divide by wn, so that's going to be 2n plus 1, negative 1 to the power n, z to the power 2n plus 1. Um, then this thing 
uh, is going to be magnitude of negative 1 to n power is just 1. So these two is going to give us 1. Uh, this divided by this is just going to be z squared. Then we're going to have 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 3. So this is just going to be magnitude of z squared because as n goes to infinity, this one goes to 1. And then again, we come to the conclusion that we're going to have absolute convergence um, provided that L is less than 1, but L is this. And so again, we are going to be back to the same conclusion that we made here. All right, uh, at this point, we're going to give you some time to have a go at the last two examples. Uh, that's this one and this one. You can just pause the video and uh, work through them. And then when you continue the video, then you can compare with our answers. All right, um, we're now going to scroll down to our solutions for C and uh, D. Uh, we would like to thank you for visiting our channel and uh, for watching uh, these uh, videos. We do hope that uh, they are helpful to you. We ask you, of course, to subscribe to our channel to support uh, the work that we do uh, so that we can produce more. If you've got any questions uh, or comments, you can post them in the comment section. By the way, for B, uh, the other way of uh, finding the radius of convergence uh, is uh, noting that uh, uh, this uh, series is uh, centered at z equals to zero. And then by just uh, inspecting the first order derivative, we notice that uh, uh, this is going to uh, have a, the denominator is going to be zero when z is plus or minus i. So that means the closest um, singularity to our uh, center or point of at which we're expanding is a distance of one um, away from the center of the expansion. So that means this is going to be the region of convergence. Alternatively, uh, that or the radius of convergence is one all right so down to example c now um, example c is 2 over 2z minus i uh, the uh, expansion is centered at minus i um, we are going to find that it's uh, convenient to divide through by 2 here so that uh, this thing looks like this and then we can now differentiate repeatedly it's going to be the first order derivative second order third order derivative fourth order at this point we notice that uh, the derivatives alternate in sign the order ordered uh, one the derivatives of order which is odd are negative and those of uh, order which is even are positive so that means we've got this one and then we've got n factorial and then this is one greater than that then if we plug in negative i over two here so this thing is going to be negative i. So we have got uh, this. If we bring this in the denominator, it's going to be negative 1 to the power n plus 1. This is this one. And then i to the power n plus 1. This works out to negative 1. And then, um, so that's uh, going to be our nth order derivative at z0, uh, which we plug in to the summation um, 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 expression and uh, so this thing is going to the n factorial terms are going to cancel out so this is going to be our um, Taylor series and then again this thing is uh, expanded about negative i over 2 if you look at this it's singular when uh, this denominator is zero, that means that z equals to i on two. And then the distance from here to there, uh, this one is gonna be one. 
So that means the radius of convergence is 1. Alternatively, of course, uh, this region, we can express it as a magnitude or mod of uh, z minus, that's plus i on 2, less than 1. We can find this again by using the ratio test. It gives us exactly the same thing. All right, for D, uh, if we differentiate this once, we get this. At this point, you see that if you try repeated differentiation here, it's going to be a problem. But uh, straight away, we notice that, again, the denominator is going to be 0 when uh, Z is plus or minus I. So these are our two singularities. Then we have seen that uh, using the... Um, um, Using the geometric series, uh, this uh, we can write in summation form like that. Then if we multiply through by 2z, uh, multiply through by 2z to get this, uh, then this is what we are going to get. Um, then, but this is f prime, uh, we need f, so again we integrate. You want to notice that if you integrate this, you get lean of 1 plus z squared, which is our function. If we integrate, we end up with this. Um, while we are here, uh, or here, then we know that... Uh, uh, this is such that it's going to be valid when mod z squared is less than 1. Okay, so here, when if we set z equals to 0, remember this side, we've got 1, lean of 1 plus z squared. So the left-hand side is going to be lean 1, which is 0. This will be 0, so k okay is 0 according to that. So that's going to be our sequence. And then again, this is expanded above the origin. We've already said at plus or minus i, this function is uh, singular. So that's going to be the region at which the function is convergent. All right. Thank you.